contest winners get a garden makeover and much, much more in today's show. We'll transform this back garden into a little piece of paradise. I'm Alan Smith. Today we're coming to you from a garden home makeover. It's part of a contest with Woman's Day magazine. I think you're going to like what you see. This is the home of Brad and Lori Compton. And I've got to say, it was a lot of fun telling them that they had won the contest and surprising them with a visit. May I join you all? Hey! Hi there. Oh my goodness! Who's here? Hi there, Lori. Oh my goodness! Hello. Hi, Brad. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you nice too. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh my yes. goodness! I can't believe you're here. Okay, I'm not gonna cry. Okay. <laughs> Please don't cry. In this show, we'll follow the transformation of this backyard space as it goes from this to this. I'll show you the plants that we used, as well as some of the fantastic products and accessories that really make this an enchanting space for this family to enjoy. You're going to get lots of great ideas from the makeover, but I also want to share an easy appetizer that you can enjoy as you entertain in your outdoor living spaces. There's a lot of work ahead for the crew, and you're invited to sit back, relax, and watch the transformation take place. We'll get started right after this. Well, I know you've seen them, all of these makeover shows that are hitting the air these days. Well, I'm a big fan of them. In fact, I've been transforming spaces for years for clients. I'm a big advocate of this approach. In fact, the way I go about it is creating outdoor living rooms or garden spaces around the home as an extension of the home. And that's exactly what we're doing here at this home just outside Nashville, Tennessee. Brad and Lori Compton are the winners of a Woman's Day magazine makeover contest. Their home is relatively new, and now that they've pulled the inside together, it's time to start working on the exterior. And what better way than by winning a contest? We found out that we were the grand prize winners in a strange sort of way. Uh, our oldest son came home from school and got the phone call. And of course, he couldn't believe it and was so excited, so he said, call my dad on his cell phone. And I was at work, and she said, um, well, out of thousands of applicants, you guys were the grand prize winner, and I, you know, and I, you know, and I thought that's pretty exciting, thinking that we didn't win, you know, wouldn't win when we first talked about this. Oh, well, then you came, and, and then he comes home and does not tell me. We're just sitting there. My feet were propped up on the coffee table. I think I had popped some popcorn, and they were sitting there quiet. And the phone rang, and. I got the phone call, and after that, I don't quite remember what I did, except I think I hit the ceiling with my head, which is a nine-foot ceiling, but I know that really didn't happen, but it felt like it did, and I don't think I sat down for two hours. I was pacing, I was calling all of my friends, my mother. It was just, I couldn't believe it. I kept going up to my husband and my children, pinch me, pinch me. <laughs> we can't wait to get started. This Very is good. just, and I think I've told a million people. <laughs> Why don't you tell me a, a little bit about the back and what your dreams are, what you'd like to do? I would like to see done with the patio uh, garden a, an extension of the house, uh, a comfortable living space that just makes it flow really well when you walk outside because that's what we, we love the outdoors and we are outside so much that we just want it to be an extension of the house and an extension of the land, just a good in-between area um, to relax and, and entertain and just um, be comfortable out here. We designed the house so that we could see the, uh, the river from every room just about. Um, and, and so we want something that's not gonna obscure the view of the river. We, we, we're constantly seeing uh, blue herons and uh, otters and mink in the river, and it's, it's great to, to see that. We want to have that view, but we also want something that's nice and, like Lori said, to entertain, do things like that. What you're most interested in is breaking down the barrier between the inside and the outside right, right. and really create an outdoor living space here. Exactly, exactly. Now, because we spend so much time outside. So what are some of your favorite flowers? Um, 
I like roses. Roses are, um, I guess, my favorite. And I have a, a big rose bush in the front. Um, I love roses as well. We're um, going to get along just yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I like uh, impatiens and um, uh, a lot of bulbs. I like daffodils and. Uh, what about colors? colors? What are some of your favorite colors? Um, I like pink and uh, purples and the blues and um, white too. Oh yeah, white will be great. So you've been here how, how long have you? A year and a half. So you're all settled in on the inside and you're ready to take on the outside. Exactly, exactly. Now you've got to be curious about how we're going to use some of the plants and furnishings that will help to make this garden transformation happen. Well, after the break, we'll dive into those topics as we continue this show on Makeover Mania. So stay with us. Welcome back. Now let's stop talking about transforming Brad and Lori's backyard into a garden home. It's time to do something about it. Let's get to work. After three months of planning, assembling a small army, and arranging for lots of deliveries, the big day has come. Now let's go around the house and get Brad and Lori and bring them around and surprise them and see what they think. Okay, now no peeking. All right, now look. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you like it? Oh, wonderful. That's it wonderful. is absolutely Gorgeous. Look at all of these beautiful, beautiful flowers. Well, you said you wanted an old fashioned cottage garden with lots of pinks, and so you've even dressed to match the whole color That's theme, right. Lori. <laughs> My favorite color, pink, pink roses. Absolutely. We filled all the beds with annuals and perennials, and they're just, I'm so excited about the way they came together. What do you think of the fence? Oh it is absolutely I told you gorgeous. we needed to sort of surround this and make an enclosure, an intimate little space. It is Great. just <laughs> gorgeous. I just oh love that bird goodness. feeder. I think it it's is, so whimsical. It is gorgeous. I think <laughs> yeah. the birds will love us. <laughs> These are, it's made by Walpole and so is the fence. Isn't it wonderful? And then now turn around and look back here. Here's your other garden room. Oh my <laughs> goodness, <laughs> look at this. It's a new this outdoor is, living space. It is. It, it, it's like a, a, a living room outside. Now take a look oh at your dining God. set. The Summer Classics provided this dining this set. Isn't it gorgeous? It is beautiful. We went ahead and set the table. We thought you'd want to entertain as quickly as possible. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, it's that's all right. set up for entertaining. It is. It is. Every bit of it. Is well, what we tried to do here, as I designed the garden, I tried to use all 12 of the principles that you find in my book, right. Garden Home. Those are the 12 principles I always fall back on when I design a garden. So we have enclosure, we right. have a sense of entry with the gate, we have framing the view with the arbor. Of course, that's another example of creating a sense of entry. Right. We have shape and form with all these different flowers and all the wonderful colors and textures that come through with the foliage with the peonies, the big round blooms, the roses, and then the tiny little flowers that you get with the verbenas, the salvias, and the scavola. Well, have a seat in these chairs. Give them a try. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh my goodness, look at this. 
Okay, I'm not getting up. <laughs> this, well, is no, my, you, this is my spot. <laughs> you have to get up here and you have to sit at the table now. I want you to... Oh, this is great. Look at this. Let's see, in the morning, coffee here or... Let's see, I may have to choose up there. You might start up here and ease your way down <laughs> as the right. morning unfolds. That's right. We did lots of clusters of containers, again, in the same color theme. Pink, burgundy, uh, splashes of, of white. I wanted to try to tie in as much as possible the colors in the house out into the garden. So we have white trim on the house, so the white picket fence was a natural. Oh, it's ju it just looks absolutely Great. gorgeous. It doesn't look like the same place. Oh, this is just gorgeous. Well, I'm glad you like it. Thank you so much. Well, it's been so much fun pulling this together. Well, I, it is, I, I imagined what it would look like, what it could look like, and it is better than I imagined. <laughs> well, that's it wonderful. Is, it is better than I imagined. Well, it is I am just so happy. That's exactly what we wanted to hear. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And we hit the mark. <laughs> yes, we hit you the did. Mark. did a good job. Great. Brad and Lori's backyard is now a garden room, fit for relaxing and entertaining. When we come back, I'll show you one of my favorite spaces in my garden and how I transformed it into a comfortable retreat. Take a look at this new twist on an old favorite. This is coleus, but not like the shade lovers your grandmother grew. These coleus can take the sun. In fact, the more sun they get, the more colorful they are. Let me share with you a knockout for the summer garden. This is coleus needlepoint. Needlepoint has lacy looking leaves. Just look at that. You can't beat these deeply serrated leaves in green and white with a touch of rose. Now you'll never want these plants to dry out because it's difficult for them to recover. So water them often enough to keep the soil consistently moist, but not soggy. As with most annuals, you'll want to feed your coleus every two weeks or so during the active growing season with a complete well-balanced fertilizer. Welcome back. I'm Alan Smith. Now we just saw how plants and furnishings as well as accessories help pull together Brad and Lori's garden room. Now I want to share with you one of my favorite outdoor living spaces. It's my loggia. Now one of the reasons I enjoy this space so much is it's where I have coffee in the early morning before the busy day begins. Now one of the reasons I really enjoy this space is that it's truly an extension of my home. I have chairs, a bench, a table to sit around. And it's also a place where I can bring objects that I really enjoy into a protected covered area, but still be outdoors. Now let's take this idea of an outdoor garden room and make it even more room-like. Just take a look at this transformation. Here I've added a sisal rug over the brick pavers. Pillows made from bright, cheerful fabrics, which make the bench even more inviting. I've even brought out an old armchair that I've covered with some waterproof material. I'm using candles for lighting during the evening. And for color, I've added a cheerful bucket of flowers and containers full of bright annuals. All of these touches make this space another comfortable room of my home. You know, it's amazing what an impact these little touches can have on a space. Who wouldn't want to kick back and relax or read with a glass of wine or a cup of tea in this garden room? I encourage you to stop and look at the spaces you spend time in, whether they be a deck or a patio or a quiet retreat under a tree and think about ways you can make them more comfortable and inviting. I enjoy receiving viewer mail, and in the spring and early summer, I always get lots of questions about tomatoes and how to grow them successfully. Well, why wouldn't I? After all, we plant over 40 million tomato plants in this country each year. Today I get a letter from Bobby in Rose City, Texas. Now Bobby goes to great lengths to plant his tomatoes in raised beds, but he goes out in the morning and finds that the young seedlings have been lopped off at ground level. Well, I can tell you that is a problem with a cutworm. And one of the best ways to deal with this is when you plant your young seedlings, just wrap a piece of aluminum foil around the base of the young plant. And in no time, the plant will grow large enough 
that it will no longer be susceptible to a cutworm. Now another point I want you to keep in mind when raising tomatoes is you really should move them around from year to year. Never plant them in the same place. For instance, one year I plant them in my raised beds. The next year I grow them along a trellis. You see, this is just one way to stay one step ahead of the pests. You see, by moving your plants around, you'll throw them off a bit. Now, I even go so far as to avoid planting tomato plants in areas where I've planted members of the tomato family, such as eggplant and peppers. So as you can see, with a little advanced planting, you can have a bounty of tomatoes. If you're like Bobby and have some questions you'd like answered, just check out my website. That's pallensmith.com. Bobby's question reminds me of a recipe using tomatoes that I'd like to share with you. It's for summer tomato relish, so stick around. When cooking, I like to make the most of what's fresh and in season. It just makes a lot of sense to me. With so many tomatoes and so much basil available to us now, this recipe for roasted relish combines the two in a delicious and easy way. You'll want to start with some meaty tomatoes like Roma. Any of the plum varieties will work. You see, the idea here is to have more meat than juice. And I'm going to use about eight to nine of these Roma tomatoes. I'm also going to add half a roasted red bell pepper. Now you can roast one of these in your oven or you can put it on the grill to bring in that charcoal flavor. After cutting the tomatoes in half to remove the seeds, I coarsely chop them and then add the red pepper. To this, I add a half a cup of fresh chopped basil, one third cup of grated Parmesan or Romano cheese. I prefer Parmesan. Then to finish it off, I add two large crushed cloves of garlic and two tablespoons of olive oil. I've blended all the ingredients together in this small baking dish that I'll cook it in. Now I'll bake this for about 30 to 35 minutes in a preheated oven at 350 degrees. This recipe is delicious served on toasted sourdough rounds. And to enhance the flavor, I like to serve it with a little feta cheese and I salt and pepper to taste. It's also a great relish to serve on the top of grilled chicken. I think if you try it, you'll like it. This garden I dream of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile oh. But smile 